Please welcome on stage Gina Steiner. Hello. Oh, I'm quite loud. Okay, um, first of all, I want to tell you that um, I'm not into drawing at all. I can't draw. I studied mathematics and physics, and uh, I really can't do that. So um, <coughs> anyway, I started to do that because uh, mainly I'm into patterns and into structure. Always was mathematics, that's pattern, mechanics, that's pattern. And uh, you find patterns all over. And uh, so um, you might ask yourself, um, why for heaven's sake uh, did I do this? Did I start to draw, although um, I can't? So um, I'm into patterns and I'm into structure, as you heard. Um, nowadays I'm doing adult change management. And you find pattern not, all, uh, not all, um, only in the numbers and not only in the mechanics. You find patterns in groups. In groups and also organizations. In uh, business, for sure, all over there are patterns when people speak and when you try to put every opinion into things, this follows some patterns. Um, in open source, that's the same as in the business. It mainly boils down in the agile business as well as in open source to participation and uh, commitment. So for me, the problem was how can I make everybody participate and how can I just make the situation so that everybody can commit? So I was looking for a tool, how to do that. And at that point, I just ran into visualization. So um, when you visualize, um, you have to work on certain things. And these are, for me, the most important things I can achieve with visualization. It's uh, about, um, does not work. Oh, no. Make content easier to remember. It's much easier to remember a flip chart when it's done well. So our brain is great in processing perceptions and feelings and experiences, but not at crunching numbers at first sight. So uh, when we're dealing with abstract concepts, that's not so, not so easy to do. So um, when you present your content and you want to the people to remember then, then it's better to do that in a graphical form. So uh, when you manage to put everything in a fixed place and it's easy to remember, this is what I wanted to achieve. In addition, you slow down. For me, that's very important because I'm a fast person. So um, drawing it um, slows me down. During a um, drawn presentation, the information comes on slower and for everybody that's easier. Now I do it with, a <laughs> with that kind of presentation, which is a little bit weird. So when you draw the poster, um, it just builds up slowly and the brain um, follows. And afterwards you have this whole picture and then you just followed it. The second that you make the abstract uh, understandable, and uh, I would say, uh, as a software developers, we all work with kind of software development, agile software development. It's about design thinking. It's about prototypes. Um, lots of things are virtual and abstract. And uh, if you manage to find pictures for that abstract things, that's easier. Next thing is um, you want to um, turn your presentation into a dialogue. If everything is already ready-made, it's not about the dialogue. It's just about I'm in the front and I tell you what it is the right thing. But when we start to talk and I am able to adapt my flip chart to the things you are telling me, then we are in the dialogue. So when you ask somebody, for example, the, the, the question, draw this production process on a sheet of paper, how many steps are there? What are the milestones? What are the greatest challenges? The person starts to think, you get into dialogue, and then you draw it down. So at that moment, you have the participation and you have the contribution, the commitment. Um, <coughs> yeah, for sure, give the elephant in the room a voice. You know, the elephant in the room, these are things which are always there. They are loaded by conflict whatsoever. Nobody talks about it. And if you start to draw these things, especially 
conflict loading things, it's much easier for people to talk about them. So you can break down these taboos into some pictures, maybe a little bit funny, and then you just can jump over this fence and start to talk about the elephant. So um, in addition, and this is especially interesting for the open source community, but for sure as well in agile business, um, when you are able to put the message out, your contribution is taken seriously here and is part of the solution, at that point you are not a single person in the front, it's more like the, you are in the back of the room and everybody is here working on the solution. So last but not least, and everybody who knows me knows that this is very, very important for me, um, you make people happy. You do something nice. And um, we are in a working world and if there are some happy things, we are just happier in our life. And for me, this is pretty, pretty, pretty important because um, I think um, this is <coughs> the thing we have to do in our life to live a happy life. And, uh, and when we are working, we should try to do that also in our working environment. So when can you use visualization? Well, you might know these things, at least some of them. You can use them in uh, retrospectives, for sure, um, in workshops. You can use them in consulting, by explaining, um, as well as in open discussions, whatever kind of discussions. That's a little bit more uh, demanding. For sure, you also can use it um, for storytelling uh, and as a single person for thinking. Some people need to write it down. It gets much clearer the moment they write them down. And as well, you can use it with visualization. And here it's a combination between writing and drawing. For sure, when you write protocol, mm, sometimes it's easier for you. For sure, it has some drawbacks because some say, oh, now I've drawn something here and now I will have to put something in here. So might be a little bit more <coughs> complicated, but I have some solutions for you here. And um, you might know these uh, nowadays graphic recording is very interesting. I don't th uh, think we have a graphic record or recorder here, but on some conferences, I really see some very, very nice graphic recordings yeah. of the talks. So this is why I chose the tool visualization, just uh, in open source as well as an agile business to get it going. So these are the things I wanted to achieve. So now are the seven easy steps how to do that. And um, so you want to make it easy to understand. It should be easy. So here are some basics. A line should be straight. If it's like not very straight, it just distracts. So how to draw a line very straight? It's very easy. In the beginning, you're fast. In the end, you should slow down because you want to end it at some point or you don't want to go it up or down. So first, fast and then slow down. That's the first very, very basic things. And you try that also out with some different kind of lines. F just practice a little bit. Um, fast in the beginning and slow in the end. So um, imagine now a pen. These are also some basics. This kind of pen, and you see that tip. Now imagine the tip of that pen is the arrow which you see. If you hold your pen like that and the really tip of the, the pen goes up, I call it 12 o'clock. If it goes the direction, I call it 9 o'clock. That one I call 11 o'clock and the other one I call 5 o'clock. What does that have to do with your line now? Now imagine you don't roll around your angle. You just keep it on 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then you draw a line. When you use 12 or 9, the line is going to look like that. At 11 o'clock, it's going to look like that. And on 5 o'clock, it's going to look like that. You can work with that. You just have to remember. So um, these are the basics. And um, when you, in addition, um, have some basic shapes, 
then you already have a cool toolbox. So what are the basic shapes? These are basic shapes. And they should also be in line, in order. Do not produce too much disturbance, take your time. These ones, and if you put like five of them all over your flip chart, that's a lot of disturbance, that's not easy to understand. So the first of all is done because you didn't uh, draw every line individually. So draw every line individually. The other one was um, because you didn't close the corners. That's because you, uh, you have been too, s too fast on each line. So fast, but then the end slow, and then close the corners. If you do that, your shapes are much more uh, clear, and that's easier to understand. Here the same, if you're too fast, you can't close the circle. So fast in the beginning, it gets round, but in the end, slow down. And uh, so you can easily uh, draw a proper circle. And uh, with the wave, it's the thing that don't put so high amplitudes into the wave. Well, less amplitudes, that looks more clear um, in on your flip charts. If you have these lines and these shapes in place, you can already build some interesting information. Oh, that does not work. That's a pity. Why? Can somebody help me, maybe? This is a film, der laufen müsste. Der wird nicht übertragen. Was ein Mist ist, weil ich komplett mit Filmen arbeite jetzt. Ah, okay, great. So here you have a circle, a line, some waves. And you see um, that you have to mind the proportions. The one balloon looks much nicer than the other one. And the last one, you see you have a circle, you're an M and Z and an U. That's it, circle, M, Z, U. And with that one, you can depict very, very different things. That one, everybody sees that's kind of an idea. That's it. You already can do that now. So the th second things, now once more, okay. The second thing is the container. Space is bigger than you think. Um, you know, you have the flip chart, you have the uh, limited amount of space, and now um, also written words all over, and this is, does not look easy to understand. Put the things into containers, and containers also can um, say a lot. Words. You first write the word, and then you put the container around. Not the other way around. Not first the container and then the word. Maybe the word is too long. So first the word, then the container. And if you have a very long word like that one, break it down. It's easier for your space. So don't be afraid breaking words down. Then you could have, can put them easily into container. <coughs> and then you have some uh, very fast stuff going on. I don't know what that was. It really is a mess at the moment. Okay. These are some common containers, and they say something different. This one is just a paper pinned on the wall. That's not a very, it's not a rule or something like that. It's something you said, you put it on the wall, and this depicts it can be put somewhere else. That one is more like a document or something like that. So if you want, if you write something about documents, you can afterwards put the container document around it. That one is a rule. If you want to really emphasize something, you write it down and then you put that one around it. And for sure, then you also have a pile of papers. This is also very, very um, nice to, to use it. But if you use that, you have to take care that you keep the lines parallel, else it really, you fuck it up. It doesn't look very nice. It's disturbed. You're disturbed. And in addition, mind that the outer lines are shorter. So 
You also have round containers and uh, then you can put some triangles on it, then you say something, you can put dots on it, then you think something. You can uh, also work with clouds or something like that. Um, so practice some containers and uh, they're really nice ones, which I really like to use. For example, that one, the flag. This goes, well, this is the target, this is the goal or something like that. You can really use that in a di different, lot of different ways. And I also like that one. It's a really easy one. Um, and you can depict steps instead of the numbers you can, word you can write words in. And also, um, that's like flexible in length. Very, very easy. So if you, um, now one of my favorite containers is the puzzle. And if you draw that one, you have just to mind the order how to draw that. Now I try to get the movie done. Yes. Okay, first you do the corners and then do two rounds. And you can depict a lot of things because these ones depict, these two things are not fitting. Um, on the other hand, if you draw it like that, you not only have the container, it says here it fits. So with that container, you can depict easily these two things are fitting, the other one's not. If you do a cloud or um, on the, uh, the other one with a, I don't know, also in the cloud, but that one, um, it's easy done when you do all of them fast, except of the last one. You stop before the last one, and then you think how much are fitting in. Is there fitting in one or are there fitting in two? So before you close it, you just stop, think about will I do now one or two, and then you close it, and then it looks proper. So the same goes a little bit about thinking uh, on, the, on the arrow. It's shorter than you think, and you first draw this part, then you draw these small parts, then you make a small dot, really not here, but here, and then you close that one. It looks very clear and um, easily used as a container. So when you now have these containers, then you have more space than you think, and you see it here. You can put a lot of things on your flip chart. Um, this is just randomly arranged, but uh, just to depict processes, that's pretty easy. But this one is not uh, really only about containers because I already added in some shadow. Because shadow is um, also easier to overview because it gives you the third dimension. So what about shadow? This is the point where we really change the things. So theoretically now we think about 12 o'clock, remember we talk about 9 o'clock and we talk about 11 o'clock. So either like that, like that, or 11 o'clock you have your pen. So when you add shadows to these things, here to these things, you use with a square 11, uh, 12 and 9, and if it's more complex your shape, you always use 11. You put the shadow on the right side and on the bottom side, and that's it. Only put your, your, your pen right to it and bottom to it, and don't change the angle of your hand. It's very, very easy. And you see the difference when you put shadow and if you don't put shadow. If we now have a look at the same picture again, then we can see really see the shadow. Every line has a shadow. And um, always on the bottom, on the right-hand side. Also, what you should do is not um, close the shadow until the next white line, and uh, next black line, just stop it here. It makes it a little bit easier and, and it looks better. So the shadow gives you the depth. Totally easy. Only gray pen and do it. That's some seconds. So the fourth thing is um, color. And here I would say less is more. Also color makes it easy to remember. You know, there are some, um, you can guide with the color also through your whole presentation. For example, in the open source community, all the retrospectives that I did, the doodles are normally the pink post-its. So over years, you can t uh, just check for pink post-its and then you will find the to-dos. So color is very, very powerful, unless you don't put like 20 colors in the same flip chart. So think about color. First, uh, you pick for a color group. There are different color groups. You can use the earthy color family, for example, for your flip chart, or the pastel family for your flip chart. And maybe you can, in addition, add one signal color, oh, but not like 20. So go for a group. There is also the group um, of the, I call them, bright and dark friends. And the same color, but some lighter, uh, some a little bit darker. 
And then, for sure, a signal color if you like. Another thing is very, very um, um, easy for people to understand. These are the complementary colors. If you write something in a color or in a color group and then you put the complementary color on it, it's totally clear for everybody, this is an opposite. You don't have to think about that. Just use the complementary color. And you know that from school, I'm sure. And sometimes you are in need of, yeah, well, I have a lot of colors already. What do I do now? Then you have everybody's darling. So I suggest you go to the store and you buy a gray pen because gray you can add everywhere without disturbing anything. So this is about colors. And now I'm going to say something about writing, because writing is about reduction, how to reduce things and how to emphasize things. Because the normal words you write should be easy to read and reduce. But the headlines you want to use for emphasis. So um, how to do that? First, I show you how to write properly. And you know, from school, uh, we went through that. It's not proper writing. And sometimes we look at our uh, writing and nobody can read it. So how to do that? So first of all, um, use a proper pen, not too thick. And use a dark one, black or dark brown or dark blue or something like that, a dark color. So everybody can read it. Can, can read it. And then think about the words in these lines. You might remember them from school. The middle is half of it, and then a quarter goes over it, and a quarter goes under it. And I think normally you think the upper part is half of it. It is not. And if you now write into it, it looks like that. And the A, the small A, is bigger than we actually think. Normally when we write, we would write it smaller. But if you write it like that, it's easily to read. It's easily written and it's easily to read. Just practice this one, once, twice, three times, and then you have it in it. So what is important here? Not handwriting here, printing writing. Huh? Maybe you already do that, but some people do use handwriting on the post-its or on the flip charts. Use printing. Then um, remember, the upper and the descender, the upper length and the descender are, all, um, are only uh, a quarter of the space. So these are very, very small parts where it goes up and goes down. The main part is for the letter. Um, emphasize the vertical length. It makes easy to read. It gives you guidance that looks in order. It does not make you think. And for sure, think a little bit about the distances. The distance between the, uh, the letters should be, if you say the distance between the letter is one, then the distance between the words should be something like three. You can write really a lot of words into container if you do it like that, and it looks it all in order. So this is about the reduction. But what about the emphasis? No? How, when you want to emph emphasize things, you do printing. But a good thing, for example, is to double the first line. Go for printing, double the first line, that's it. If, you, if in, in addition, strengthen the word a little bit, like in the second line, it gets another feeling. No? It gets a lighter feeling. The third, I just moved the middle line a little bit to the top. And it's like, it looks like a little bit like design. Here, I just put it a little bit down. That's it. And if you then have a little bit time, and this is really easy, you can color it in different ways. Well, that's very colorful, but I just wanted to show you what things you can do. I wouldn't use <laughs> all the colors in the same headline. So this is about the easy headline. You can do that while, while uh, drawing. And this is the emphasis. This is what a flip chart is about. Every flip chart should have one headline to know what it is about. Here you have the things. You can color it, make it lighter, move it to the top, or move it to the bottom. And then you have the handwriting. If you have time to prepare your flip chart, um, then you want maybe want to put a nice fancy um, and headline over it. Uh, you get some oohs and some ahs. You need some time a little bit to uh, do that. And now I show you how you do that in the movie. <coughs> so you just uh, do handwriting, and then you double every line which goes down, not the ones which goes up. That one would be wrong. Only you double the ones which goes down. And um, if you, you might uh, use a steady bass line, if you like, but you also can use a dancing bass line. It's very easy. You just try it uh, um, before the dancing bass line, and then you go with the handwriting. And then you can fill it up in the same way which you did uh, with the other headlines. Yeah. 
we can go on here, but maybe I, we can also skip. Uh, but this is the interesting thing <coughs> with the dots. I really like the one with the dots, which is going on now on here, the blue ones. But you see that it takes long time if you use a, a pen which has a very, very uh, pointy tip. It is much, much easier if you then switch the, the, the pen and uh, then um, you fill it up uh, uh, faster. So um, the next will be about templates. I think I can skip that, you get the how it works. So now it's about templates and about speeding up. In the, in the whatever, some retrospectives, like one and a half hours, and you need to take a lot of things. So maybe uh, you get good guidance by using some templates. So a template, <coughs> you can prepare that, and you can use it for a lot of things. You just leave some space empty, and afterwards you fill it up. You bring a ready-made template, and during whatever happens, you only know these kind of amount of steps I have, and then you just fill it up. You can find templates a lot all over the internet, and this is how they looked, look like when they're not filled, and the other ones are after you did your retrospective. So this speeds you up significantly. Google it. And last but, but not least, that's the seven steps, is um, icons. Don't make me think, like I said, icons are speeding up a lot because all the things which you see are then in your mind without writing anything. So, um, you know icons, they should be easy. You s already see here, um, when you put shadow, that's really an enhancement. You can also Google a lot of uh, these icons and uh, there are also the wonderful Bicablo books. There are two of them and it's uh, just books full of icons and what these icons depict. Don't use um, icons which you have to think about. They have to be easy. Don't make me think. Use the ones which come in your mind the very first. And if you don't have an icon coming into your mind, then you write a word down. Not everything needs to have an icon. Huh? If something pops in, you use the icon. If not, you write down the word and put a container around it. No problem here. And if you then start to write, uh, uh, to draw these icons, you just use the simple lines and your, your basic shapes you have and put a shadow on it. That's pretty easy. You can already do that. That's it. That's a nice icon, and you can do a lot of it. It's innovation, this is the kickstarting, whatever what comes into our mind. So these are the seven steps for improving your flip charts, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>